that God has given us. How many know that God has blessed you with some resources? You may not have the level of resources that you may want. You may not have everything, but God always gives us enough. But the question is, how, what do you do with what God has already given you? Because if God gave you more, would you know what to do with that? So what we're going to learn today is how to be better managers of our resources. Number two, what we're going to do, we're here to make an assessment. Say assessment. Does everybody know what an assessment is? You know, every once in a while, every year, you need to make an assessment of your life. An assessment of what do I need to do? What do I need to learn in order to achieve financial freedom in my life? And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to find out what do we need to learn? What is it that we don't have? What is it in our game plan or our repertoire that we don't have that will help us to have financial freedom in your life how many know that what you don't know will hurt you a lot of times we think we don't want to know but we need to know because what you don't know will hurt you there's some resources out there for you and we're going to talk about that later here's our third objective we are here to find out where where can i receive the financial freedom at as you see we have these workout these uh, workshop sessions with the breakout sessions where we'll talk about debt some of us need help on eliminating debt some of us need help on finding out how to spend our money correctly, how to do more with less. Some of us need to learn about investments. We have a workshop on investments. When you get a little bit of money, how do you invest it and turn your money into more? Anybody want to turn their money into more money? Amen. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Also, insurance. Insurance is security. How many of you need some security in your life? A lot of times we're remiss to remember that there's different types of insurance vehicles that can also help us to make more uh, money in our uh, financial situations. Also, credit. You know, uh, you go, you want to buy a car, you want to uh, finance a home. How many know you got to have a certain kind of credit score? So we're going to talk to people about how to repair your credit, how to continue to get your score up. I don't care if you had a 720, you still can shoot for an 800, amen? Amen. So we're going to talk about credit. Also business. Do I have any business people in the audience? Just say, hey. All right. Business. I love business folk because business folk don't have to punch a clock. Business folk can go in when they want to go in. They can work as hard as they want to do. They can work hard in the beginning. And at the end of the day, we can all be like my buddy Andrew sitting right here. <laughs> I tease them, but, but you know what I'm saying today. Business is a, a great thing to be an entrepreneur, to start and finance your own business, and not just to have a business, but to have a successful business. So that's what we're going to talk about today at the Freedom Conference. Also, access to wealth. Many times there's uh, political connections you may need to get into with your, with your county, with your city, with your state. There's resources that you need to know about in order to have access for your business and for your life. So we're also going to talk about access to wealth. Anybody want to be wealthy, say amen. Amen. So that's what we're going to talk about, the road to wealth. But think about this. Our first question is, what is financial freedom all about? Think about this. It's about finding out how... Receive God's best for my life. How many of you want to receive God's best for your life? See, a lot of times, God has more for your life than you can even ask or think about. And see, that's what we want to tap into. We want to tap into God's best for our lives. So thinking about this, it's about also accessing God's best, having access to it, but also it's about managing it. And that's what we're talking about today. So what we're going to talk about real quickly is the prayer of Jabez. Say the prayer of Jabez. If you read the prayer of the Jabez in the Bible, it's a simple prayer, but it has very powerful results. You know, many of us want to have real long prayers and eloquent, and that's beautiful. But sometimes it's the simplest prayers that you can pray that can change your life. And so that's what we're talking about right now, the prayer of Jabez, which is about receiving wealth and also expansion from God. Anybody need expansion in your life? You need to go from where you are now to another level. And so that's what Jabez found out. He found out the key to reach another level in your life. So think about this. First Chronicles chapter 4, 9 and 10 says this. It says, Jabez, say, repeat after me, say, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel. He said this, repeat after me, say, oh, that you would bless me 
and enlarge my territory. Now think about it. If you say it like that, I don't know if God is going to hear you. Can somebody, can we get my rowdy folks, say, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free. There's the key word. Say it like me. Say free from pain. Anybody want to be free from pain in your life? So that I will be free from pain. And the great thing is, here's the answer. And God granted his request. How many know that God hears and answers prayer? God, oh, you can say it like me. Put your hands together. God hears and answers prayer. So you can do everything we teach you. You can do everything you find out. But first, it starts out with prayer. Remember the big question. How do you enlarge your financial territory? And how do you receive the blessings that God wants to give to you? And if I can tell you anything today, God does want to bless you. And so that's why I want you to sink this prayer of Jabez in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit. It starts out with Jabez. What about Jabez? Let's talk about Jabez real quick. Jabez of 1 Chronicles. Jabez said this. The prayer of Jabez might be overlooked because of this. In 1 Chronicles chapter 4, the text really starts out with a bunch of names. And many of us, when we look in the Bible and we see a bunch of names, what do we do? We keep on going. So you forget, you miss all that. You miss the history. You miss what's going on. And a lot of times you skip over the prayer of Jabez. So what can we learn, though, about this brief biography of Jabez? We learn the four petitions of Jabez's prayer. And we find out in the beginning of the, uh, the uh, chapter, in chapter 4, we get all this history, but Jabez's family is left out. So Jabez is actually born into pain. He's born into a bad situation. But think about this. Jabez is also a notable unknown in the Bible. We talk about Moses. We talk about Paul. We talk about David. We talk about Solomon. But we don't talk about Jabez. But Jabez was a blessed man by God. And so that's why we shouldn't overlook this. So the question we must ask is, what can you learn about Jabez that will help you receive God's best for your life? And that's what we tap into in the prayer of Jabez. Think about Jabez the man. There was some difficulty surrounding his birth. His mother named him Jabez. Say Jabez. Jabez. Say Jabez. Now Jabez means pain. Yet Jabez, Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, the Bible says. So even though he was born into pain, even though he was born in a tough situation, he was more honorable than his brethren. So through his life, and though his life has started in some pain, though his life has started with some bad times, his past may have been pitiful, his ending ended in victory. And that's what I want to teach you today. Your ending can end in victory. How many of you believe that today? Just say amen. Your ending, your ladder can be greater than your past. He is also known as a man of prayer, and his prayer of simplicity and directness is worthy of our study because it led him to increase. And what I want you to do today is know today that your prayer can lead you to increase. And so he teaches us that people who come from past difficulties, who come from hardships, can still rise up above their circumstances and get more out of life than they ever imagined. How many of you believe that you can get more out of life than you ever imagined? And that's what I want you to get today at the Freedom Conference. Know this. His first petition, as we, as we read in the text, is, Oh, say, oh, that you would bless me. Somebody say, bless me like they mean it. Bless me. That you would bless me indeed. Think about this. Jabez asked to be blessed by God. We must never forget. We must never forget. We must never stop asking for God's blessing in our lives. Jabez taught us to always continue to ask God for his divine favors. Before you go into your classes today, we're going to pray for divine favor in your life because divine favors go beyond anything that we can ask God. It goes beyond anything we can comprehend. It's one of those shockers. Anybody need a shocker in their life? Anybody need a real kind of rags to riches story in their life? That's called supernatural. Say supernatural favor. 
Now watch this, Jabez the prayer. His petition again was, oh, that you would bless me indeed. He prayed the biggest prayer possible. It wasn't the longest prayer again. It wasn't the most elegant prayer, but it was the biggest prayer possible. He fought back to the God of Israel. And just to give you a little background, we know about the gods of Israel. What did he do? He freed the Hebrew slaves. He took them out of bondage. So if God can take them out of bondage, if God can take your neighbor out of bondage, how many know that God can do the same for you? And so that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about believing in a God that can take you out of bondage. Believing in a God that can bless you indeed. What is a blessing? Again, it means supernatural favor. It means supernatural favor in your life. So remember, when we ask for God's blessing, we are crying out for the wonderful, the unlimited goodness that only God has the power to know about us or to give to us. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Jabez, the prayer, the first position. Oh, that you will bless me indeed. We often lose blessings simply because we don't ask for them. Think about this. How many know that you're missing some blessings in your life simply because you don't know what to ask for? I remember this story about a man who was, uh, he made it into heaven. He made it in there by a shoestring. I tell you, some folk just might make it in there by a shoestring. But he made it into heaven. And so he's at the pearly gates. He talks to the angel. And he says, I'm ready. I'm ready for my robe. I'm ready for my new pair of shoes. And I'm ready to meet God. So the angel said, come on in. You've done your work. You've accepted Christ. And now you're going to heaven. So he walks in there. And he sees this big, beautiful building. This big, beautiful building. And, and he says, I want to know what's in that building. And the man said, no, you don't want to know what's in that building. The angel said, no, don't worry about that building. Let's just go. Let's go to have a praise party with Jesus. He said, no, I want to know what's in that building. So the man goes in that building, and uh, he sees these boxes with names on them. So he gets real excited, and he says, well, where's my name at? And he said, is my name in here? And the angel said, yeah, your, your box is here with your name. And, and he said, well, I want to see my box. He said, no, you don't want to see that box. He said, you want to go on and go down the pearly, go, come on in and, and have fun in heaven. He said, no. He said, I want to see that box with my name on it. So the angel takes him to his box. He said, it's up there. He said, climb that ladder. Go up there, get your box, and bring it down. So he went and got his box down and he opened it up he was excited and he looked in the box and when he looked in the box the man started to weep and you know what he started to weep for because he looked in that box and he saw all the blessings that God wanted to give him but he did not ask for so today oh you can give God some praise there are blessings that God wants to give us that we haven't even asked for yet so all the blessings that God wanted to give you on earth may one day just be stored away because you never asked for it. But remember this, James 4 and 2 says this, ye do not have because ye do not ask. So today I want you to ask. Before you start the work, before you do anything, just ask God to help me to do some special things with these tools that I'm going to receive today. Remember this, you got to change the way you think. Say change the way you think. You've got to change the way you think because God wants to bless you. God's bounty for you is only limited by you, yourself. God's bounty is only limited by us. Not by his resources. Not by his power or his willingness to give. Because the Bible says God is able and God is willing to give to us. The Bible says God has all the power and the Bible says that God has all the resources. So we know that we are the only reason that we don't have everything that we need today. Jabez was blessed simply because he refused to let any obstacle, any person, any opinion loom larger than God's nature. Don't let nobody stop you from following your dreams. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it. Because the minute you let somebody else dictate your future, that's where you'll be stopped right in your tracks. But we serve a big God. Don't you believe we serve a big God? Don't you believe we serve a powerful God? Oh, you can give him praise for being big. You can give him praise for being a powerful God. So God's nature is again to bless. So remember this, through a simple believing prayer, you can change your future. You can change what happens to you one minute from now. You can change what happens to you on tomorrow, next week, next month, and next year and you can start today. 
So the second petition was this, and I love this part. It says, repeat after me, say, enlarge my territory. Jabez said, oh, would you enlarge my territory? He prayed for prosperity. There's nothing wrong with praying for prosperity. Here we find biblical support for asking God to help us in material and or financial blessings in our lives. Yes, you can pray for material and or financial blessings in your life. Jabez did this. He was not selfish, covetous request, but a request for the promise of God's land inheritance. Jabez knew that God wanted him to have it. God already said he could have it. God already had it available to him. So all he said was, give me what you have for me. And that's the awesome thing about the prayer of Jabez. So we need to ask God to enlarge, say enlarge. Enlarge what he promises us as Christians. He promises to enlarge opportunities, say opportunities. Say talents, say service, say responsibilities, and financial stability. Oh, you better say financial stability like you mean it. Start financial stability. So the Bible says this. The Bible says a prayer, good prayer is give us this day our daily bread. Give us what we need daily, Lord. And he, the Bible says he'll grant it for us. So the second petition, enlarge my territory. Jabez looked at his current situation and concluded that surely I was born for more than this. How many know you were born for more than you are right now? That's what we have to believe. I was born for more than my current situation. And I don't care how big you are, how much money you already have, there is more available to you. And you have to remember and say it in your mind that I was born for more than this, for more than this. Then he also, he asked God to move the boundary lines in his life. Anybody got any boundary lines in their life? Anybody got some boundaries that may just be stopping you? from going to that next level, we have to ask God to remove that boundary line in our life. So remember this, things in your life will get more exciting when you ask God to expand your opportunities. Expand your opportunities. Enlarge in your territory. Ask God to work through you. Business owners, you can bless the lives of others by being able to employ people. Amen? You can bless the lives of others by the services that you render. Your industry can bless people so God can work through you, through your business. And so that's why you want God to expand your territory. Help me to increase jobs. Help me to help other people in a certain kind of a way. That's enlarging your borders and getting rid of the boundary lines that are in your life. So remember this, the third petition, and we're almost done. Oh, say oh, that thy hand might be with me. Jabez asked God for his providential hand of protection and guidance in his life. Anybody need the hand of God in your life? Anybody ever remember that song that said, Jesus be a fence around me every day? That's what we God's providential fence around us, protecting us and guiding us as we continue to move forward and to move up in our lives. So we need God's guidance in using what he has blessed us with. There's, there's a blessing can be no good if you don't know what to do with that blessing. A lot of times we squander the blessing because we don't know what to do with the blessing. So we need to ask God, God, watch over me when you bless me. Take care of me when you bless me and watch what God will do in your life. So think about this. When you receive big harvests and big blessings, you need to have a big God to help you manage it. And that's why we ask for his guidance and his protection. Now the fourth petition, this is the last petition that we need to make sure that we have covered. Say, keep me from evil. You know, evil lurks all over the place. We see evil. We're still trying to find out what evil may have uh, caused this plane in Malaysia, the Malaysian airline plane, to go down. That's a prime example of how evil can creep in anybody's life. But Jabez had the secret. He prayed to God and he said, keep me from evil. Jabez asked God to be kept from evil, which leads to sorrow. How many know that evil leads you to a sorrowful life? Evil around you will lead you to pain and suffering in your life. 
uh, evil will lead you into debt. Evil will lead you into real life thinking that you don't need to invest or have insurance in your life or do more to enhance your business. Evil lurks all around the place. And so we need to ask God to keep us from evil. He need to keep us from evil influences. How many know that bad relationships will destroy your blessing? He needs to keep us away from bad relationships. He needs to keep us away from evil knowledge. Anybody ever had some bad advice? Oh, you can raise your hand if you ever had some bad advice. People will give you bad advice every day. And they sound like they know what they're saying. And so bad advice comes to us all the time. But God gives us one thing that we need to remember. God can give you discernment. Say discernment. Discernment means God will help you be able to pick the weeds out from the flowers. And the flowers is the good advice and the weeds are the bad advice that want to turn you around. So realize, ask God to keep you away from evil knowledge. And lastly, ask God to keep you from the evil works of men. Anybody ever had a hater in their life? Oh, you know a hater. Everybody knows a hater. I swear the devil just assigns a hater to everybody. They sit right next to you. They sit behind you. They're always nagging in your ear. When you say, I want to start a business, they tell you you don't have the capital. When you tell them, I want to start a business, they tell you you don't have a way to do it. When you tell them, I want to start a business, they tell you, man, just shut up. And they're usually the person working right next to you at your job. Amen. But there's people out there who don't believe that you can turn your life around. There's people out there who don't want to see you prosper. They don't want to see you make any more money. You walk up there with a new car, a new house, or a new pair of clothes, man, they're looking at you like, who is that? They get upset. Ask God to keep you away from those kind of people. Ask God to, to just help you to not even worry about what they have to say. Because at the end of the day, you can be a living testimony of how God can bless your life today. So remember Jabez's prayer said, keep me from evil. Remember, blessings and opportunities will always leave you open to an attack from the enemy. But don't lie in fear. Don't lie in defeat because God's power, say God's power. With God's power, you can keep your blessings and opportunities that you asked for. Jabez was spared. Remember this, this is the end of the story. Jabez was spared from grief and pain that evil brings simply, simply because of this, because he asked God to keep him from it. And so that's the awesome thing about the prayer of Jabez. So remember this, say God answers prayer. And the Bible says this, as I close, the Bible says, and God granted that which he requested. How many of you want God to grant your request? How many of you are standing believing that God will grant your request? So remember this, God stands ready to hear and answer the honorable follower. Remember that word, the honorable. We have to be honorable people, the honorable follower. So the result is this, God gave Jabez blessings rather than sorrow. So what I just wanted to teach you today is that God can give you blessings rather than sorrow. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you used to do in your past. God can make your ladder greater than your past. So my prayer for you today is this. If you ask, God will bless you. God will expand your territory so that you will prosper and receive God's best for you. If you believe that today, give God some praise today. If you believe it today, give God a hand clap of praise. So today, I just want to announce our sessions and then we're going to get going and get right into our breakouts. We have our breakout sessions, but I want to call it breakthrough sessions. Say breakthrough. Because I want you to get a breakthrough. I want you to break through something when we go into these sessions. I want you to learn something new. It might be one little nugget. Might be two little nuggets, but it's something better than you came in with. The first one we're going to talk about is living a debt-free life, spending wisely and saving wisely on a daily basis for all of our shoppers. You need to be in there. If you love to shop, you need to be in there. If you love